Hello, um, you know, uh, sometimes we think that that communication means is speaking, right? Communication, someone speaks great English, he's a great communicator. Uh, someone, someone speaks very fluently, he's a great communicator. Somehow, somehow the world has got used to looking at communication as speaking. But here, for the next few minutes, I'm going to be talking about something that's that's not even that's not even part of any curriculum right even though it's part of it's an essential part of communication it's not even not even considered as something important right i don't know whether you're starting to guess what i'm going to talk about i'm not going to talk about the opposite of communication i'm going to talk about something that's integral to communication I'm going to be speaking about listening skills, L-I-S-T-E-N-I-N-G, listening. I spelt it out simply so that it stays in your mind for the rest of your life. Because once you learn how to listen, you will see a, an important change in your life you will see that people starting to respect you more because you are a better listener. You will start to build better relationships. You will, you will start to be well liked. You will start to train yourself as a friend, as a coach. Because you have started to listen to people. When you say listen, when I say I'm a good listener or when you're a good listener or someone is a good listener, what do I mean? I mean that I'm paying attention to him. You know, I still remember one of the most beautiful quotes I have read in my life is the quote saying, getting someone's attention is the most sought after luxury in the world because nobody gives you attention nowadays. And getting attention is so luxurious that if, if you're able to give attention to someone by listening, that person is going to be friend with you for the rest of your life, right? Why is it, why is it, ask yourself, why is it that listening is not being taught in schools? Why is it that listening is not part of an organization? Why is it that organizations don't encourage its, its people to listen? Why is it that doctors, teachers, engineers in those professions where listening is absolutely critical do not listen? Why? So a reflection question for you is, why don't people listen? Even before we say, what is listening? Why don't people listen? Of course, now the next thing you'll ask me is, Shiva, then what is the meaning of listening? What do you mean by listening? Well, <laughs> For me, the easiest explanation for listening is paying attention to what people are saying. If my friend is speaking to me, paying attention to what he is saying, not to his style, not to his grammar, not to his English, but what is he trying to tell me? What is he trying to communicate to me? Right? Is he communicating, is he communicating sadness? Is he communicating happiness? Is he communicating this? disgust, he is communicating a, a, a problem. What is he saying? What is he actually trying to tell me? Because only if, no, no, ask yourself, why is he targeting me? Why is he coming to me to speak to? Because he thinks that I will pay attention to him. He wants something from me. He wants a solution from me. He wants attention from me. He wants a shoulder to cry on. And can I deny him that? But instead of denying him that, I, I give him that. Why won't he be a friend of mine for the rest of my life? So listening, by definition, is paying attention to someone saying something. Now we're getting into the nitty gritties of listening. There are various types of listening. There are various types of listening. One of the, so essentially what is listening is reducing the noise in your head, right? Um, and seeing with your ears. Reducing the noise in your head, what does it mean? It means that my head is full of noise all the time. 
and when you are speaking to me, let's say Shiva, good morning. I say, okay, good morning. And then you say, Shiva, uh, you know what? Uh, my mother has been admitted to hospital today. And you're telling me that. You know what I have? I have noise. I have noise about, oh, I don't, I have not even listened to you. All I have listened to is hospital. So I start to say, yeah, yeah, which hospital, uh, you know, uh, my mother is also admitted in hospital about 10 years ago. That is the noise. So I use the noise to talk to you. But supposing I'm keeping my blind blank, right? I'm not, I'm not allowing noise to interfere. And when you say my mother is admitted in hospital today, all I am listening to is that your mother is in hospital today. And that is the only thing I'm supposed to listen to. Everything else is not necessary. The noise cannot interfere with my listening. So reducing the noise in your head is what we're talking about. And of course, seeing with your ears, because your ears, normally we think we can only hear with, your, with our ears, we'll actually be able to see the person's thinking with our ears. And then we talk about different types of listening. Uh, before we go to types, have you figured out why we don't listen? Have you figured it out yet as to why, what stops us from listening? There are at least three or four. If you can start to figure out what stops us from listening by the time we finish this, I'd be very happy to, to know what you have written. Coming back to passive listening. Passive listening means listening without interruption, not to interrupt while someone is speaking. If only you can check yourself against interrupting, then you probably have started to become a better listener by now. Just do not interrupt. Wait for the other person to finish. If you are serious about listening, that is, if you're not serious, if you don't care about the other person, if, you, if the other person is someone who doesn't mean anything to you, interrupt all you want. Here we're not talking about those types of listening. We're not talking about those types of relationship. We're not talking about those types of people. We're talking about using listening for developing oneself, for building relationships. If you want to do that, stop interrupting. The second is listen to the whole person, right? You, you, someone is speaking to you. Don't just listen to the words. Listen to the voice, the tone, the, 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 the body language. Most people are not great communicators. Most people are not. You can't expect them to be communicators. Most people are who are poor communicators who are also communicating using their voice. You're also communicating. So someone who raises the voice and is saying, my mother is ill today. He's actually saying that he is in distress. He may not say, I am in distress because my mother is ill today. But the very fact that he raises his voice is conveying to you that there is distress in him because of his mother's illness. So tone, body language, voice of the person, listen to that, passive listening. You can also acknowledge by saying, mm, oh, I see all those sounds that we know how to make, right? When someone is speaking, just so that he knows you're there. And of course, there is, when someone is very distressed and upset and, and, and crying and in tears and all that, all he wants to do is just pour his heart out to you. At that point of time, it's silly. I'm not even going to say rude. It's silly to interrupt, especially when someone is in distress. So this is passive listening. Start with this now, right? Just start practicing with passive listening. And you will see the change. Do this three, four times with a person you have constantly interrupted. That person will come and say, you know, there's something different but nice about you. Active listening. Active listening is listening with animation, acknowledge, mirroring me. So supposing I'm saying, you know what, I don't know what to do. You say, what? You, you sort of mirror me, acknowledge my feelings. Say, hey, Shiva, wait. You know, just explain it to me once again. So you're actively, actively listening to me. You're part of my communication, you're part of my, my body, you're part of my whole, right? part of my background, part of my territory. And you paraphrase for understanding. For instance, at the end of, at the end of my sentence, I say, you know what, my mother is admitted in hospital today and this morning she, she had a slight uh, chest pain and now uh, we have taken her to hospital. Uh, she's going, the doctor is saying he's going to wait for some results. Paraphrase it. You say, wait, wait, I understand that your mother had a heart attack this morning. 
did she have a heart attack or did she have chest pain? So I said, no, no, she had chest pain. Oh, and what is the doctor? When is the doctor going to, uh, you're saying the doctor is still doing some examination. So what you have done, you have paraphrased it, right? You have, you have understood what the other person is saying and you have put it in your own words and you're giving it back to that person. So that person knows that he or she has communicated effectively to you. That's called paraphrasing. And then you ask for clarification. You say, wait, what time did your mother get admitted to hospital? 6 o'clock or 6.30? You are asking for clarity, right? And then you ask questions. Which doctor? What hospital? How long has she been having this chest pain, right? And finally, you mirror the emotion. Supposing that person, you don't have to cry with that person, but you have to look sad. You can't look, you can't possibly be jumping in joy when someone is actually being sad. You cannot be taking your phone and, and talking on your phone when that person is talking to you. You have to put your phone on silent mode or throw it away. That's not important. What is important is that person having come to you asking for help, asking you to listen. And listening is the best help you can offer to anyone. So passive listening, active listening, start with paraphrasing. Right? Start with paraphrasing, start with asking for clarity, start with asking questions.